Now today's video for you is part two of how to paint an Asian otter in watercolour. Now in this part we'll be painting the second eye, the ear, and we'll even make a start on painting that lovely soft fur. Now this is one of my older lessons from my Patreon channel, so give it a go and let me show you how to paint realistic animals in watercolour. Let's get the bushes wet shall we, and let's make a start. So let's work around the eye now, I'm trying to get some life around the eye. So we're looking at something like this, a bit of a kind of Payne's grey, you can see that as it graduates down. So that's what we're looking for, okay, so let's get that one on first. I'm going to use a size 1 or size 2 brush, this is a size 1, doesn't really matter which one you use, as long as you've got a good point on it, just so you've got a bit more control over it. Remember this, this particular brush is the... Um, Rosemary & Co Spotter Series and they've got a very short kind of bristle as you can see on their very short end which gives you a bit more control as well when you've got short bristles like this. So what we do, just wet the area initially. I tend to wet areas, not always, well most of the time I do. <laughs> and then we're going to drop this bluey colour in there, so bluey, blacky colour into there. Right, okay, so now what we'll do, we'll work on the top of the eye, so we just wet it down again, just clean water, not too watery, not too runny should I say, you don't want it like a waterfall again, and just over the top of the eye, try not to touch the eye if you can help it, okay, you don't want it to blend into there, apart from this area, because <laughs> right in the corner of the eye here, it kind of disappears into it, so, okay. So again, we're using that kind of um, ready blacky colour. Just look how that just spreads. Amazing stuff, isn't it? So bring it in, barely touching that paper again. Just lightly touching the very tip of the, of the brush. And then bringing it down to this corner. Now this corner on the photograph blends into it, so that's quite handy actually because we can just finish that one off into well into the eye literally so let's control the way that's blended there and what we'll do is get a clean brush and just smooth it out along the very top of that area okay just smooth it out <laughs> looking okay it's coming together then down to here Add a little bit more colour in there again, the same, ready black. Just the very edge. Just it shows that curve of the upper eyelid, you know, that's what we're looking for here. So we've got the very edge and then it kind of curves up, which is what we're trying to get. Bring a few down into here now. And a few around here. So barely touching the paper again, just using the tip of the brush. Again, this is that size one. Once you get a good tip on it, you can get fairly fine with a size one. And just bring a few strikes into there as well. So what we'll do, we won't go any further out than this because I want to soften all these pencil marks down first, just so we can just see them, if you know what I mean. Let it dry, I'm back in a minute. See you in a moment. So I'm going to darken down some of these areas in here now, just by barely touching the paper again. Skimming the paper, a few marks here and there, just kind of show that form as it comes away. Don't it completely dark around here, so you've got to be careful not to overdo it. I think with something like this you can make it simple or as more complex as you want it to be. So you don't have to have it this detailed, but you you know, if you want to practice detail, which is obviously why you're here, then you know this is the way that I would do it to achieve the kind of feel of realism, hopefully, <laughs> when it's all done. So again, look at the direction that all the furs the fur goes in. This is wet fur obviously. So looking around these areas here, trying to see where it's darker and lighter and where some of these details tend to lie. Just define that a bit more. 
And I think that is roughly, I'll say this, about it. <laughs> for you it's not, but there's more to do on there. So what we need to do next, I don't know if you guys have got the same on yours, we need to lighten all these pencil marks just by dabbing them with a putty rubber. Once they're done, we can then think about getting a wash of colour over the top, okay? But before we do that, what I want you to do, things like the ear, where's that ear? Ear. Things like the ear, just define it a little bit with a little bit of paint. So I'd get a bit of, I know, this ready black colour. Okay, as you know, I'm very technical. I'll say ready black. <laughs> just so you know where it is, because very often when you put a wash colour over the top, the pencil marks may disappear. And you don't want that to happen. So just very lightly touch the paper again. Just make some reference marks where some of these more detailed areas tend to be, especially the ear, you know, or around the mouth as well, and so on. So it's worth kind of bearing that in mind. So bear the student paper, just make some little marks, just so you know whether where to place them in case the pencil disappears on you when you put these washes on next. Okay? Right, so very gently tap the paper and just lighten those lines down that little bit now as you go around just to soften them out you see where I put some paint on here now also don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below and don't forget that bell icon as well just so you'll never miss one of my YouTube videos just dampen this eye down a little bit of water in there just to give it dampened down again remember how we did this one this will be very similar but a more simplistic version of it because we can't see a great deal all we can see is like a little curved area and when we do the white over the top of this, we'll pull a few white strands over the top, which kind of breaks up the, art, the, the line a little bit, which would be ideal. So again, what we're going to do is going for that kind of ready black colour, which is the, um, the lamp black and the alizarin crimson, okay? And we're going to pop that in straight away into the damp area. Try not to make it too round. It's got a little curve to it, but it's not round round, if you know what I mean. So it's got a tiny curve to that. And I think while this is wet, yeah, that's about right. While this is wet, I'm going to add a little bit more black to my ready black. And we're going to pop in a little bit more around the very inner, inner edge of that, just around here. Hopefully you can see this all right now. Right on the inner edge. <laughs> I think you can see it. If I'm seeing what you're seeing, then you can see it. <laughs> okay. So, I think what we need to do is now let this dry. And then once it's dry, we'll pull out a little highlight in there, which will then make it stand out. Because looking at the curvature, I think it's got a slight more curve than that, actually, Paul. Which is about there. We'll then pull out a little highlight area. Because it's not highlighted on the photograph, so we don't want to put a big white spot on there. We just need to kind of just put a little area out just to kind of give it a bit more shape. Like we did for these highlights here, okay? We'll do the same for the little area down there once it's dry. So let's do that in a moment. So again, a clean, damp brush, okay? Clean, damp brush. Try saying that when you've had a few. And lightly go over the same line time and time again, okay? And then whilst it's wet, come in with your tissue lift it off and you get this lovely little highlight in there. I think we'll get a little bit of watercolour white actually saying that. Just a little bit. This is more of a double cream consistency. And very gently, because it's still damp that paper, put that in. It's a bit stark at the moment, a bit white at the moment. That's not a problem. We'll come back in with a damp clean brush. And just soften that down over the top of it. The same again to the side just to soften the highlight down a little bit it will dry lighter than that we know that it will nearly disappear on us but it just gives us that impression of a highlight in there as well right what I want to do now we've got the eyes done we've got the nose done so I want to work on the ear okay so we need to get a color wash on there first so I'll just cover that over a minute this is my and colour palette which I've got here and this is what we're going to be using. So the mixture I've got in there is alizarin crimson 
lamp black and a little bit of burnt umber as well. So those are in crimson, lamp black and burnt umber. Okay, and this one basically is what we've got on here. So just tested that out. So the first thing we're going to do with a size one brush is kind of wet the ear. Okay, remember we've got these reference marks already in here, which is quite handy. We'll help helping hand a minute. Okay. And we need that colour just mixed as a, just as a background colour really. So I'm just going to pop that into here first. Just as a background colour. As I mentioned, I tend to get all these features done first when I'm doing a portrait. And at least then you know you've got, well you've got something to look at for one. And you know the fiddly bits and more kind of areas where you have to concentrate and try and get it about right are out of the way. You know, you think, oh I've done that now. You know, and you've got a little bit more freedom when you're doing all the fine hairs and details afterwards. So I'm going to bring this in and around. Now while that's wet, I'm going to go into a little bit of blue, okay, which is a French ultramarine. And pop a little bit of that on the top of the ear. Bear in mind it's going to soften, it will get lighter as it dries. Okay, and that same colour again, but I'm going to add a little bit more kind of lamp black into that. And this is for the center of the ear. Again, this is the foundations. This is what we're going to be working on top of as we go along. So just for the center. All right, and I think we'll probably put a line of that around the outside of the ear, or the, the very edge, should I say. There as well. All right, okie dokie. And just soften it out. Because even though there was a you can see where the hole more or less kind of stops around here. It's only barely visible, so we just want to kind of just get an idea where it goes to without making it too defined. Okay, and I think that's roughly about it for now. We need to kind of let this dry, and once it's dry we can then put a few more details in there. Just so we know that the ear will then be done. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to pull a few strands out this way as well, actually, just whilst I'm here. Otherwise you end up with a very dry, sharp edge. And look at the direction that the fur goes in, as I'm doing this, from the edge of the ear. Okay, slowly does it. So, we'll let that dry, we'll come back to that shortly. Right, while that ear is drying, I'm going to get a thinner version of the same colour we just popped into the ear here. I'm going to put in a few lines where some of these kind of hairs go. And the reason why I'm doing this, I'm kind of mapping out the area already. So where you got your pencil marks when you did your drawing out stage, I'm just going to kind of define one or two of these just in certain areas. So when I put the wash on shortly, I'll know underneath I'll be able to see these hopefully. I'll know the direction that the fur goes in when we come to the, the more detailed stage. Okay, that's after we get the foundation wash on. Right, so with that one, what we're going to do is probably darken this area down in, in the middle of the ear now. Just keep looking back at your photo. So what I'm doing, I'm using this, uh, this kind of thicker, darker colour. I'm going to add this in now, looking at the direction that all these lines go in as I go along, that's all I'm doing. Looking back and forth at the photo, just making sure that you know, I'm getting them in the right kind of direction as I go along. It's so important that though, I keep saying about it, but it's so, so important. You know, even if you don't get the colours right, or the, the underlining tones right, whatever you paint, to get the angle of the hairs, the fur, the, the feathers, whatever it might be, to get those in the angle and the shape, that will give the um, the animal or bird or whatever you're painting some form, which is very important, very, very important. And it will kind of help it come alive that little bit more for you, and it won't look flat as well, which you don't want it to do. Okay, so, so far, it's coming together a little bit more now. I'm trying to get the shapes in, doing these little curly marks. So as it comes up the ear, it comes like a comes more straight there and then starts to curve over as we go up the top 
I've just added a tiny little bit of French ultramarine into that mix. You don't want to put any more colours in because it can then become quite muddy. Okay, Just so we can put a few in, because bear in mind we've got a bit of a highlight on the top here which we'll add in when we start putting the watercolour white on. So you can see the shape of that ear coming together now. Right, I'm going to pull a few extra ones out this at the side here as well, just for now. Just so we got them ready and waiting for when we start adding more detail to go along. Just to kind of finish off the edge here. So I think what we'll do, we'll leave it at that. And we'll come back to it in a minute and we'll put the wash over the entire body. That's the next stage. So let's do that next. Hi, my name is Paul Hopkinson. So what I do, I show you my technique on how to paint wildlife in watercolour. We go through a variety of subjects from dogs, cats, insects and even botanical subjects as well. And I'll guide you through this right from the beginning all the way through to the end for those final brush strokes. You'll also find that with most of my videos you also get the outline drawing and that reference photograph as well. Every month we produce a PDF version, so a typed out version with photographs of that monthly main video. You'll get the PDFs for the months that you are a member. Now this is a very in-depth document with lots and lots of pages of information and instruction, as well as obviously the photographs as well. Now another benefit is that you get access as well to my private Facebook group. Now the good thing about my videos is that they'll be here 24-7, so you can watch them six months down the line, two years down the line, it doesn't really matter. They'll always be there, you can stop, you can play, you can rewind, you can pause as many times as you want to do so. So that will give us some ideas on what you'll gain from being a member on my Patreon channel. Now when you look at the photograph, you find on the photograph around underneath the chin, side of the face, underneath the chin, it's a bit more like an ochre browny colour. Alright, so what we've got now, we've got yellow ochre, which is this one, we've got burnt umber. So we're going to steal a bit of burnt umber from there and pop it into the yellow ochre. Uh, probably have a little bit more, but before we go back into burnt umber, I'll wash and brush out. <laughs> You've got to do it as a habit as well, otherwise you start tainting all the other colours, which you don't want to do. So this will be a watered down version of this. So this is a burnt umber and yellow ochre. So let's get some water there, look. So that will dry a lot lighter than that. The only other thing you'll need in the palette as well is a little bit of alizarin crimson. Um, that's underneath the chin, believe it or not. So underneath the chin, so around the bottom of the mouth, have a look on the photograph there, you see it's a bit pinky, but you probably need to water this down quite a lot. So let's see about that. So that's going to draw a light to remember. So we're looking at something like that, give us some ideas. Right, so let's get a wash on this body, shall we? Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to my size 5 Rosemary & Co brush. I'm going to start from the top and we're going to work our way down as we go along. You can use a larger brush if you've got one, but the only thing I would stress is just be careful when you get close to some of the features that we've painted. Okay, don't, don't want to be going over the top of those or touching them if you can help it. And you'll find if you try doing it all in one go, if I went down here it could be dry at the top by the time I actually start, so your best bet is work at one section at a time. But don't completely fill in all the wet area, just kind of work so far into the wet area, then re-wet below that area again, so you've always got a constant wet area to work into if you know what I mean. So, so make sure you do that when you do it. So, okay. Right, that's that bit so far. I'm going to get our wash colour in now. And I'm going to pop this one in, this is going to dry a lot lighter, don't forget. So I'll pop this in first, this is that one we just mixed up earlier on. So very carefully, not to go too close to the edge if you can help it, don't go over the edge. But If you find it's too dark like there, just get some clean water and just soften it out. It's too dark. We just need this colour on to, to begin with so it's not too white. I know traditionally you would use the white of the paper to show through, which it still does in this case, but that's what you do normally do traditionally with watercolours. But my technique is a little bit different to that as you know, where I tend to cover up a lot of white of the paper and I use my own white. But that's just the way that I tend to paint. Okay. So it's going to soften this end a little bit because I'm getting to the dry paper there. 
I don't want it to be um, to be a hard edge if I can help it. Again, I'm trying to be careful not to have too many dark patches. I mean, there are areas like around here; it's a bit darker on the otter, but we can add those in as we go along. I've got a bit of a stray hair going on now on this one. Just noticed on my brush. Again, I get into a dry area, so before I hit that dry area completely, I just want to kind of re-wet that area a little bit. Otherwise, I'll end up with a hard edge once again, which I don't want to do. Just working as I go along. Changes flavour around here, so you've got to be careful now. When you come down to the side of the face, that's a little bit darker there still. So I can go back to there, just drop a bit more in. This is where we go into the yellow ochre in a bit as well. The one we've already mixed up, so let's pick that one up a minute. And we can just wash that off. Okay. So you can see I'm kind of re-wetting the area, or wetting just below where I'm going to be working to. So I've kind of, I'll put the paint into here. Still wet there. But before I go any lower, I'll re-wet another section. So I've always got a wet section to go into each time. So I think you get the idea of that. Right, I'm going to pop into the alizarin crimson. Remember this is quite watery. And I want to put a little bit just in there. Okay. That's enough. We don't need too much. And then a little bit of yellow ochre. I can see looking at the photograph, there's a bit of yellow ochre around this area as well. So I'll just put a little bit of that in there. All right. <laughs> cute little face, isn't it? it? Really is a cute little face, this uh, little character is. And then bring that along. And back to your colour, which is the dark one we've just been using on the head, the same colour. Bring that underneath the chin. And probably pop a few in here and there, but you don't want to completely fill it. And the reason behind that, we're going to pop into the yellow ochre now. And start sticking some of that in there as well. Not too much, don't overdo it. I'd rather do too little than too much at once, okay? So just keep it so you're not overpowering it with too much colour initially. Okay. This is that dark colour again. We should already mix, so go back to your dark colour, pop that in. When you do this, make sure that you get the little strands on the edge as well. You know what we use a masking fluid that time. So make sure that that's poured right into the masking fluid lines that was taken out. And the reason why you do that is because when it dries, it'll dry quite a hard edge. And then you'll have all these white marks which haven't been tinted in. So just tint those in a little bit, very carefully. Okay, just as you go along. I'm going to do half of the chest initially. So going back into the yellow ochre colour. Remember this will dry a lot lighter than this. Like it's starting to dry on the face down a lot. So pop that in. Again, it's just as a background colour. Which will show through. We'll still see that once it's all dry. When we get the detail over the top. This will make a difference to this part of the body. Just by popping it on. It's all the preparation work, isn't it? You know, before you um, go into all this lovely detail work. So, preparation is the key, okay? And I think underneath the chin, I might just pop a little bit of this colour in there as well, mixing with the yellow ochre. Just so we've got a bit of a dark patch started underneath. Alright, so we've got to look at this. There's a bit of a crease coming down here as well. So, again, we'll just put a little suggestion of, of a crease in there, just a little bit. But this will show through and will help us as we go along for the later stages. Right, so what we need to do with this now, let this all dry and then we need to start on all that lovely detail work, okay? So we'll see you back in a bit. So what I'm going to do is grab a little bit of this, pop it into there, a bit more water in there, my kind of pipette or pipette, I never know what to call it. Please correct me, how would you pronounce it? <laughs> And I think, looking at how watery that is, that's the kind of colour we're looking for there, okay? Right, I'm going to start with the colour we've just mixed, just above the eye, okay? We're going to keep it light to begin with. And my brush, again, has kind of gone into two bits, like a snake tongue at the moment, so I can do two lines at once. 
So I need to replace this brush, but hey, it works, and I'm quite happy using this for now, until I need to get any, any finer details. Right, so this is just a light layer to begin with, is what I'm kind of putting on at the moment. I'm looking at the direction again of the fur, on where it lies. So this will be the first initial kind of layer we're going to be working on. As we know, we have got another brush as well, which I've kind of squidged and made into like a little kind of branched out like that. And I'll just show you that one. It's ideal for the underlying layer. So this is what happens to it when it goes wet. See all the little spikes? So it's quite handy if you want to paint quite a lot of detail, for the background detail anyway, initially. But as I mentioned before, you can use this idea just to kind of get some underlying detail on first. And then for the final top layer detail, when you go in with a darker colour, just use your normal detail double zero brush. With the old brush, all I've done is kind of squeezed it with a pair of pliers. And what that's done is kind of sprayed out the bristles to give me this kind of effect. Um, you can buy them, you can buy uh, rake brushes, which are quite good as well. Same kind of idea. And they're pretty good. Um, but they, they're too, for me, they're too uniform because all the bristles are in the same direction. You know, whereas with this particular one, they're all over the shop, which is what I want. I don't want every single line to be, you know, kind of plumbed level with one another. Um, so, yeah, so you can see this is adding quite a lot of detail very quickly for the first layer. Oh, okay. The length of the strokes also makes a difference as well. So I'm just going to get some more paint on my brush. All right. What I do when I get the paint on the brush, by the way, I'll try not to get it on the paint in here. If you can see it in here, this is the one I'm using. This is a watery version we just made up. I tend to wipe it on the edge of the palette first, just so it ends up with the spiky bits showing. If it's fully loaded like that, it's going to end up with a big blob of paint, or very watery paint in this case, on your painting, which is what you want to try and avoid doing, really. So be very careful not to kind of go all Mr. Blobby on it, okay? Now, as it comes down towards the... between the eyes, Again, I'm looking at the angle, always looking at the angle of the photo and the way the fur goes. Never fail. <laughs> and kind of curls around here, so we've got that kind of angle on there. I think it when, when you first start painting as well, it's knowing how to look at things. You're looking at things with a different kind of perspective, a different viewpoint. I think what we'll do with this one, we'll just go down probably to the top of the nose and you can see these are very short now so I'm, I'm not trying to do long strikes just doing a little short strike so little tiny strikes barely touching the paper now with that one again and still got the, the well the four prongs there so to speak which is really good works a treat and not bad for an old brush I think this is my third attempt making a brush like this I've never seen anybody do one so I just thought oh wow well, that's an idea it's expensive to buy some of the brushes nowadays, and if you can make do with the old ones that you've got and do something with it, you do so. Right, okay, what we're going to do now with that one is put a, a wash of water, just clean water. How am I going to get a size? Let's have a look what brush to use. Size 5, I think, will go on this one. This is my Rosemary Co. brush, this one, and it's fully loaded with water. And I'm just going to dampen this down just a wee bit. I don't want it too wet, I don't want it running down like a waterfall. Just a little bit. Dampen it down, soften it back. Don't run it out, don't do it too much so it just disappears all the detail there. Otherwise you just wasted your time doing all that detail work. But just a little bit, just kind of uh, soften it back a little bit. Okay, while the top section is drying, what we're gonna do, I'm just looking at the photograph, I'm gonna come down this way here a little bit. And a little bit underneath the nose as well, and down the side of the nose. So we're just going to add a few more darker details in there as well. This side of the face, or this area here, um, you find it's got a bit more yellow ochre in there as well. So we've got to be careful how we can approach that section. It could be this colour, but with a little bit of probably yellow ochre added to it. Okay. So again, looking at the direction that this all goes in. Barely touching the paper. You see the little tiny marks I'm making now just by tapping the paper. And just bringing it down in the direction that this that the fur in this area goes. So we've got to remember as well this fur is wet. And because it's wet, it's not that easy to replicate in the sense of trying to just layer. 
this is where, when you look at the photograph, this is where the pink goes to here. And we need to kind of come over the top of that area to get a bit more paint. I don't want it too wet on this. So over the top of that area there and bring it down to here. Again, we've got to be careful because we're going to be going to the yellow ochre area soon. It's not all yellow ochre, I know, but there's a lot of yellow ochre in there. So we need to kind of add that to the mix with all this area here, which is what I said earlier on. So we'll do that in a bit. So back to the size 5 and some clean water, and again we're going to soften this area down now. Oops. A little blob going on there. Blobby blobby. And just wash it down without taking all the detail away. If I scrub at that, the detail will just disappear underneath. Okay, I'll just end up with a grey a gray mark. So I don't want to scrub it. Okay, well join me again in part 3, where I'll show you how to build up that very soft looking fur and also to make it look fluffy and quite realistic as well. I'll see you there.